what's up you guys we are back on the 428 and today i'm going to finally finish the run stand i still have to make the front mounts to install the radiator uh, we have to do the gauge panel for all the gauges and finally do all of the wiring so that this thing can start with a push of a button man that's going to be so cool the last thing are the startup preparations, like adjusting the rockers, and I still have to change the gear on the distributor to match the cam. Um, somehow we have to mount an alternator on this thing, and I still have to buy the starter and the MSD box. Uh, <laughs> the more I talk, the more I realize we still have a ton of work to do, so let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing I have to do is figure out this radiator mount and I really wanted to make it adjustable side to side like how I have everything else. But since I'm going to be mounting a gauge panel right on top, I don't think that's going to be possible. I did take a look at other run stands and some of them have the gauge panel mounted on the side, which is pretty cool. But I think for the sake of saving material and cost, we're going to have to do this all in one piece. So what I'm going to do is cut up this 2.5 inch square tube about three to four inches and weld that to the frame and then I'll slide over the square tubing and that's going to be uh, tightened down by a hole with a bolt so I'll have to weld a nut right here and that's what's going to hold these two pieces together and that's going to allow for the whole piece to come off all in one go and I think that's going to work out really good I do have the original 64 Galaxy radiator, so I think as long as I don't weld the distance you know, too close or too wide, I think it'll fit pretty much 90% of the radiators out there. So let's get this thing done, let's start working on it, and let's mount a radiator on this thing.
the completed radiator mount. This thing came out awesome. Check out these movable brackets that I made. So we're able to adjust these up and down according to how big the radiator is, which I think came out really nice. Unfortunately, it did not fit this one because it has like this square mount on top and then it also has two lower mounts on the bottom so we'll need the radiator to be completely flat on the bottom and on the top i did try another one that i borrowed from juan anguiano so big thanks to him for letting me use his setup unfortunately that one did not work as well because the cap is right in the middle and we need it to be on the side so i guess we got you know the 10 percent radiators that don't fit but uh, I did a video on his 69 Ford Cobra. If you guys haven't checked it out, I'll put a link up here so you guys can see it. I'm pretty sure we'll see more of it in the future, but he's got a very, very cool project going on as well. But the next thing to do is the gauge panel. I sort of have an idea what I'm gonna do. I have some metal plates that I'm going to angle down and then I'm gonna buy some uh, aluminum plates and mount the gauges right on top right here. So let's get this gauge panel done and let's get this thing wired up. Alright guys, the gauge panel is done. Check it out. We've got a little few things to do, but this thing is ready for blast off. Check that out. Super cool. Um, I did it this design because I still have room to put two other gauges on the side. You know, maybe a boost gauge here or like a vacuum gauge over here. We still have room to do it. But I've already started hooking up the oil pressure and then I hooked up the temperature sensor as well and I've also tightened down the shafts to 35 foot-pounds and also the crank bolt so this stuff that I forgot to do when I was uh, doing the engine but we are almost there next thing is we're going to adjust the valves um, I'm still waiting on the uh, starter so we're gonna do the adjustments get this thing ready and then once I get the starter we'll wire all this thing up and get this thing ready to fire almost there 
So here we go. This is the Ford FE book, which is super good if you're ever thinking of you know, working on your FE engine. I would highly, highly recommend this book. I've showed it several times. And here we're gonna see the adjustment on how to do the uh, valves there. And Juan's gonna tell us about how to do it right here. <laughs> so this guy talks about how he prefers to go uh, one at a time when it comes to the individual rocker. Um, and he'll continue to cycle through uh, by rotating the engine to bring the chosen rocker to the lowest valve lift position. Um, the base circle of the cam, which is the base circle of the cam. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, so we basically want it to be about 0 0.050 of lifter preload. And uh, a full turn gets you pretty close to that. Um, it's not like a small block where you have to adjust the adjustment at the fulcrum. Um, you do it directly at the push rod. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through every one of these rockers. We're going to... Uh, turn the engine over and see when it's at the lowest point and then make sure that it's snug you can turn it and we're going to do one full turn so that will make the preload at a close as close to 0 0.050 as we can so let's get this thing adjusted and that's going to be it so the way to do this from what it says in the book is we want the rocker to be at its resting point at the lowest point on the cam lobe so for that, we're gonna keep turning the engine until the intake is all the way closed. That means that the exhaust one will be at its resting point. So from right here, we can go ahead and start doing the adjustments. Just let me get my wrench like that. And let me loosen this up. So you're able to move this up and down and you're pretty easily able to twist it. So what you want to do is just until it starts to get snug. You see right there, I can't really move it anymore. And at that point, we're going to do the full turn starting from here. And there you go, the full turn. Now we're going to tighten this up. The lock nut. And that should be right there spot on so i already did it to all the rest of the rockers uh, we're all ready to go for the fire up next thing to do is to install the starter let's do it check out the starter i picked up so i actually got this one for a hundred bucks used uh, i guess the guy just wasn't using it anymore here's the part number it's a power master 9506 and this thing is really really tiny it's a mini starter but yeah it's used but the guy said that he wasn't able to really use it because of his header situation but you're able to loosen up these screws here and then turn the whole thing so that you know it can pretty much clear any headers so I'm not really sure why uh, he didn't use it but I did read online that sometimes you have to grind on the block because it does not sit flush so let's check this thing out right here so this is how it's gonna go so we can already see right there it's not sitting flush because it's hitting in that area right there so i'm gonna see if i can clock this uh, out a bit uh, i think i'll have to install the header here just to see how it's going to look like as well so let me get that out so here we go i loosened up the two screws on the front of the starter and now we're able to rotate it check that out we've got a lot of room to adjust um, it's sitting flush now on the plate as you can see and we don't have to grind down on the block on that area which i'm pretty happy about so this right here would be the lowest point where we could set it and we still have a lot of room in between the header and the starter there about two to three inches i think i'll still end up putting some heat shield on here just to protect it from the heat uh, we just don't want it to you know mess up the the starter there and have starting problems but i think this is where it's going to live so let me tie this down and we'll install the starter pretty cool design 
Moving on to the spark plugs, I picked up a set of Autolite 3924s and these are for the Edelbrock heads. Edelbrock recommends using the Champion spark plugs but I've always used Autolite and I've always had pretty good luck with them and since I'm using the MSD ignition box with the MSD distributor we can open up the gap a little higher to 0 0.050 of the gap and that's what I have it set to right here so I'm just gonna put some anti seize and there you go 0 0.050 so always want to put anti seize on aluminum heads you just don't want you know any problems if you ever have to remove them so let's get this thing going and saw these spark plugs and let's move on to the next thing next thing is moving on to the alternator and the brackets so i've got some original brackets that came with the 428 that i bought and i sandblasted all of these with my new sandblaster i did some modifications to it and these parts just come out amazing i've never had a sandblaster before and this is definitely a game changer check that out that's super nice um, but I've got this uh, old alternator here. I'm gonna see if it works. We're gonna get this tested out. But uh, you know, I, I'm gonna get a one wire alternator, a power master, which is what I always get. But for now, we're just gonna try to start this thing. I'm also not gonna use the original brackets uh, for my build. I'm gonna go with a full serpentine setup from CVF. But of course, for now, I just need to get this thing started. So I'm gonna do anything possible to reuse stuff to get this thing up and running so i've got the alternator installed with the brackets it came out really nice i've also got the valve covers installed so big thanks to juan for letting me use these for the startup these are really nice i've also reinstalled the radiator and i think all i'm going to do is put some wood blocks right here so that i have enough room to open up this cap i think at this point i just really have to make this work and get this thing started it's just been way too long I've also got the MSD box in. Um, I went with the 6AL because it has a rev limiter and this is a pretty good insurance in case your throttle gets stuck and your engine is revving crazy high. This thing will stop it and give you enough time to turn your key off and save your engine. I've also got the wiring diagram on the back which is really cool and I've got the starter solenoid ready to go so all i'm going to do is mount this thing on the run stand and that will be it so keep a lookout for the next video of the 428 series this thing is gonna start so no more talking no more waiting for parts all i'm gonna do is flip the switch and turn this thing on and that is going to be super awesome i cannot wait it's been a long time that i've been looking forward to this so keep a lookout for the video next one is gonna start and that's gonna be it thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys on the next one boom